Now you made me think of what an adult circus might be. And, uh... <laughs> Cirque du Soleil. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> now, you know what? That, that's... I remember my favorite was the Simpsons one where they go, and the, the, the guy's, like, standing on Homer's chair with the foot on either side and juggling his balls right in Homer's face. And Homer's like, ah! ah! <laughs> <laughs> And I like too. Whenever they do like a parody of something like that, the people who do it, like the performer, they're always like me. There's me. Mm -hmm. There was a there was a, a fun bit in American Dad a million years ago that was uh, Cirque de Hey Hey Hey, and it was mm -hmm. like hee haw. No, it was. Uh, what's happening? It was what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Raj. That's amazing. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. Rerun! Holy crap. The fact that we remember that show. Yeah. Taking me back. Hello, everybody. We are uh, getting ready to do the Weird Things podcast. Hello. Ooh, getting that, weird. Based on the movie, Cooley High something something. Cooley, Cooley High? Yeah, that's where, uh, that's where the show got it was actually some of the same cast was based on. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. No. Oh. Had a very, uh, much more little. good time talking to a, a fan of, of uh, both of our work about um, trying to sell them on uh, Peter F. Hamilton's uh, uh, Pandora's Star. And, and the, the hook that I was talking about is, uh, in, a, in a world, in a post-singularity world where, you know, death is euphemistically called body loss, like the most, the most important discovery of plus or minus 100 years is a backyard astronomer seeing a star that's there and then a star that's not there and then all of a sudden it's like it just changes everything i love i love the idea that something so small is so uh, 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 creates ripples that that are so large yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah i love that like when he builds the much bigger i know you 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 made it through the other stuff but <clears throat> i i couldn't the other one just got layers upon layers upon layers i'm like i just want one kind of really cool layer you you eventually made it back though when it got into um i think we talked about there there's this dual reality of a post singularity sci-fi universe at the same time as a very simplistic fantasy universe and they did a pretty good job of explaining the why both of them were the same and then eventually <clears throat> uh steve jobs goes from one to the other or a clone of them does uh yeah i mean i all right wait because like i paint i like the whole trilogy but well, like, what what uh pandora star is a uh, is two books it's pandora star two. judas unchained then there's three after it um and i think that what i'm thinking of is the one that is even after that where yeah where where, where um uh, this person uh, they talk about like psychic abilities in terms of long talking or or long arming or whatever. Yeah, and, I, and when it got into the fantasy street urchin kid with psychic powers, I was like, I just I'm like, if I want to read fantasy, I'll go read fantasy. You know, I loved it. I I loved all yeah. of that because um, spoiler alert, uh, the the idea that look, man, that energy comes from somewhere, and in in this universe, it comes from consuming more of our universe and translating oh, I, it into the, I, the ultimate holodeck i mean i'm cool with that i just the shift the story shifts so that to me it was just like he he gets layered these i don't know i'm i'm a simple man brian i'm a simple man <laughs> i'm a simple man with simple knees brian all i need is is dyson spears I need, I need a mint julep and a cool fan I don't know who this is. Boy, the Southern, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Southern <laughs> Gentleman it's, it's, Sci-Fi. It's, it's us Colonel right Sanders. now in Austin <laughs> where it's 98 degrees every oh. GD day. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, speaking of getting hot, you guys want to do the show? Yeah. Heck yeah. All right. Well, I'll count you in, Andrew. In three, two. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Adrian Main, joined by Justin Robert Young, who is not here, Whoa. unfortunately. Oh. Oh. Ah. oh, swing and miss. Too busy. It's oh. too busy to be mm. here. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do have Brian Brushwood. Hey, Brian, hey, Brian no, here, no, right? No, no, no. I'll, 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 I'll sub. 
All right, cool. You and me, just you and me, bro. It's cool. Uh, you know what? Let's bring in one one more person, uh, three person. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you need a third, he hello. Uh, Wait, is that Bryce? Is yeah. that Bryce yeah. Castillo? Hello, yeah. hey, can come I on in, Bryce. Hey, how's it going, fellas? This game is for players only. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> well, I'm glad we're all here now, so hmm. we can all talk about. Can, uh, Andrew, I know that you normally have things teed up in a certain order. Uh, I, uh, okay. This this week, I happened across a headline that I was too excited, not uh, uh, just very excited about. I mean, tell me you've seen that photo of the fully assembled, gigantic 44 the fully, story the fully erect tall. starship. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have not. You messed starship. Oh, 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 you've not seen it? No, I missed this. What is oh, this? my gosh. Christ. No, finally. Oh. <gasps> right? <laughs> Ding <laughs> dong. Thing, right? Let me, <laughs> let me just change the story order here. And you stack my stack. I'm sorry. I was too excited. No, no. I was. So, I saw that. I, 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 like, stopped family members, and I was like, I need you to look at this. And they're like, yeah, it's a rocket. I'm like, go back to that Let me image. explain to you the scale of the thing. <laughs> Can I tell you what's the most impressive thing there? <laughs> the cranes. Yeah, the, 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 the bucket trucks, the yep. little cherry pickers. I didn't know they made them that tall. Uh, uh, there was a similar moment where it's like uh, there's a couple of pretty tall cell towers, and uh, uh, somebody was working on one, installing more cell nodules, I guess, or whatever. But but for some reason, the fact that they had to have a crane that was even taller than the tower that was designed to be very tall yeah. is what impressed me. I, I remember being so impressed by the height of the cranes because, like, the, like the crane, they keep adding more and more crane to it. And then they show this photo, and you see the cherry pickers where these guys who are – this is on a stand that's got to be, like, 50 foot tall. Yep. And then on top of that is the booster stage, and these guys are on cherry pickers that go all the way up to the top of the booster stage. This would be – if you had a Falcon 9 rocket there, they would be able to be on – go be tweaking things in the dragon capsule like you could just put astronauts in there through this cherry pick wow wow it is amazing so so what is I mean, the rocket's cool too <laughs> so uh what is the next step on this uh i i assume some other test flight to see if they can make a big big explodey so the flight plan the flight plan is the goal is they have a flight plan they registered for a flight plan which is basically to send this thing up and to uh land the they want to land like the booster in like the ocean and do like kind of the stack like just do a soft landing in the ocean as far as approval <laughs> from the F faa that's still they're still waiting they have to be some environmental impact stuff because they want to launch the most powerful rocket there is you know from some sand dune out there in texas so wow is there a timeline on it i guess do they I guess pending we, that approval, huh? We don't know because, like, they've been work, working like crazy fast pace here. And meanwhile, uh, Starliner, Boeing, Boeing's remember there was Crew Dragon and Starliner are the two things that NASA's planned to help bring astronauts, Amer return American astronauts to space on American hardware. And there was several years ago, like, who's going to go first? Who's going to make it first to space? Who's going to be the first to carry astronauts? Will it be Dragon or will it be Starliner? Well, it ended up being Dragon by a big margin. Starliner what, has not done a successful mission. They did one attempted mission unmanned to the International Space Station. We covered that, and there was some sort of error with the orbiting computer, et cetera, like this, and it came, they were unable to make that interception, so it came back down. They were like, you know what? We think we learned everything, though. We're ready to go put people in the next one. And NASA's like, you know what? You know that mission you didn't finish, you weren't able to do, which is a robot-controlled one? Yeah. Maybe we do that one again. Boy, like, well, it's going to cost. Like, you know what costs more than money? Human, Human lives. lives. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, like, like, oh. All right. And like, well, who's going to pay for it? Maybe you should pay for part of this, you know? Because maybe. And so Boeing's like, fine. So Boeing, last week, was going to do that follow-up, that mission to make sure that it could do that. Now, they had got delayed before because of... uh uh, the delay on the Russian module, et cetera. But anyhow, so they were supposed to go last week. They had it on the pad. And then they checked, and there was some problem with some valves. They had like 12 valves had some errors on it. They're like, whoopsie-daisy. We're going to have to pull this thing back into the bay, take it apart, and inspect the parts. And so they're like, oh, the good news, we've inspected 7 out of 12 valves, and they're fine. Good news. 
That's but not, but that's no no that's less than twelve. And now just cor correct me if my math is incorrect. I believe seven is We're not, not twelve. We're not rocket scientists here, Bryce. <laughs> We're not rocket scientists here. Okay, you see, in, in space mm -hmm. science, rockets is yeah. it's base five it's, is what they're doing. So it's actually fine. Yeah, they're yeah they're they're both prime numbers. But twelve's not really a prime, well, but it's, it's a special yeah. prime because it's not a prime. But we call it's it actually a prime. very much not a prime. Yeah, it's so it's much a not a prime. Number. It's an it's an A prime. So uh, back back to the original question: uh, uh, When do we think the that very very tall spaceship is going to go? It's a, we don't know, Brian. We don't know. All right, we don't know. Uh, they did the stack, then they unstacked it, and they brought it back into the bays. They're you know all kinds of little very complicated piece of machine. They've said Elon had said before he hoped to see this thing go up by end of August. So. Well, a big the, coming up. That's coming up. Yeah, it's only big, got a couple weeks. A, yeah, big a big thing there too. It's not so it's, it seems like the rocket like I think he has a tweet, you know, one of his latest tweets is like rockets in good shape, rocket booster, but it's the they got to put the heat shield the heat heat sh shields on. Uh booster that we're reading here, booster engines need thermal protection. On the ground uh propellant storage tanks need to be done. And the quick disconnect the QD, the quick disconnect quick disconnect cable, which is what like you see right before rocket launches. They need to that, so it's a lot of the ground support stuff. Hmm. Uh, what kind of odds do you give? Like, technically, what they're saying is, and then after going very far up into space, it'll land eh, somewhere in the ocean near Hawaii. Like, it seems to me, classic uh, SpaceX move would be to say, and by land somewhere near Hawaii, what we mean is majestically like perfectly uh, vertically land in the the water and then fall over that, or something. No, that's the plan. They are going to try to do like they did with the original uh, booster stages. They're going to probably try to do a controlled descent to make, you know, try to do a controlled descent. But not on a drone ship, just into no, the ocean. No, no, oh, no. right. Interesting. 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 I don't know if that drone ship is ready yet. Uh, oh, I guess you would need a pretty big a one. Pretty big huh? one. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It'd be a big, uh, I mean, some might call it an island. <laughs> I mean, SpaceX being SpaceX, they might. I, th I know they widened one of them. I think, you know, who knows? Like, they've learned a lot about, like, oh, we'll let it land. Like, oh, we need, they have a, we talked about the robot that goes out to on the Falcon 9s and goes out and attaches it to the, the deck. Hmm. Because they can't put people on there. They have a quick little robot. Well, as long as we're running with the theme of Brian just asks Andrew questions, uh, I read an article with an interesting headline that suggested that maybe the ISS rotated a little bit more than we expected uh, last time we talked about it. Uh, well, I mean, I think that corrected what we had said, but it certainly it, w it was clarified NASA's understatement of what happened. Was yeah. this the James Oberg article? I, I guess, I, 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 yeah. but but apparently yeah. it did a full on double backflip uh, in order, which which was yep. a bit more than we had expected. Yeah, and that was Oberg. Oberg has an article, and Oberg used to be a mission controller for NASA. He's done a lot of great stuff, and also like UFO stuff and all that. Let me move uh, story number three up to the second position. Here, Brian. <laughs> um, this, so, is, this is my new game. It's Mentalist Brian <laughs> predicts how the show's going to go. <laughs> you get number three, Brian. I'm sending you a T-shirt. Uh, so uh, oh, James Oberg does really, really great coverage, and then um, – this is a different article, I guess. Uh, so Oberg went in to talk about, like, here's a piece of like, there's a problem. Here. He's like, the way this was downplayed, he said, this is the first time in the history of the ISS they've had, like, a, there was a certain kind of emergency alert condition. They've ever had that. He said that when we had the Challenger accidents and the Columbia accidents, he says, these things were preceded by this complacency because everything works fine. We're like, no, we're good, we're good, we're good. And then it doesn't. And so he's like, this is a warning sign. The fact that we're not putting pressure on the Russians, it may be more of a political thing, et cetera. They've been a number of other issues, been problems there. The fact that he said, listen, there was no information in the ISS that that rocket thruster was even firing. There was no sensors. NASA had no data that that rocket thruster was firing. The only way they knew was when they look at the telemetry and they're like, our space station's flipping. <laughs> and it's like, why is this? And Russia, because Russia, we talked about before, like, what's the difference between, like, NASA and what's going on with Russia? I said money. 
Russia doesn't have the coverage around the world that they used to have as far as telemetry data. So they didn't even know what's going on until it came, a space station came over Russia and their ground, you know, uh, communication systems were able to connect to it. I'm like, oh, looks like we've got a firing thruster. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. So, so. Am, am I right in understanding, and I only read the one article, but it sounded like, like it, it had gone far enough over that the way to correct was like, well, might as well keep on going. <laughs> and then they, they, they did a full-on backflip. Uh, maybe. That might have been the case. But it was, it was a severe, severe, and it was the downplaying it is, they immediately downplayed it, and then they've now post like, oh, no, we're correct. Like, like, like a rocket thruster can fire on your space station and nobody notices until they look at the telemetry on the ground. Right. I mean, like it's it's I know it's not an easy job, right? Rem remote, uh, you know, telemetrics on, on that stuff. But get a telescope up there. Could you see the boosters going or something? Because it's it's <laughs> well, it's, we it is. Look. From, from, I mean, I bet I bet it's, it, it was a mistake, but you do have to be able to you know, correct for that mistake and make sure it can't happen again. Yeah, if 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 I recall correctly, it was something like the the shift was like a single degree every one or two seconds. Something that that even you being there on the ISS would not notice because everything would be moving so slowly. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's hard to it's hard to know who to point fingers at in this case. But uh, well. You, I mean, you outside, start one outside the, of the Russians, who definitely yeah, I mean, you start there, had a like, misfire and, and shot it and do an I mean, somersault. if I walk into the garage and I see Bryce and his new car have driven through the wall, <laughs> like, hey, bro, you should have put a tennis ball up. Should have put a tennis ball. <laughs> Me, meanwhile, Bryce is like, I went very slow. I only penetrated one inch every two seconds yeah. over the last four minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's my, yeah, it blames me. Uh, so uh, Oberg points out something, too, which I did not know, and this is kind of crazy. So the Russian space module, uh, the NACA, it's, it's a... Let me find the, the data here. Uh, it's made out of paper mache. It well, first he says what's interesting is that there was a similar incident that that turned out uh, the Zara nodule uh, had a similar you know like had similar problems with communications issues, and Nakal like so back in like 1997 the FP FGP module had some problems as far as communication stuff etc. The Nakal module, guess what that is? It was a rebuilt and upgraded backup module for that so this module they set up there is 25 year old hardware that had a problem yeah oh there was i want to say and they did this. they were not you they were not doing a lot of reuse i mean we talk about reusable parts nowadays but um no not well, two and I a mean, half decades ago this wasn't reusability bryce this yeah. was like the prototype sitting in the warehouse of like, oh yeah, this is the test thing. Now it never will launch. Just not a thing. That, it was literally just a piece of backup hardware. This literally sounds like a Michael Bay movie. <laughs> this sounds like this sounds. We've like got a, a prototype hey, we got back. This thing laying back here. You tell me we send this into space. Well, okay. it, it might just you, work. <laughs> I'm gonna send you this this prescient article uh, from, and it's, it's crazy because this is. I remember laughing so hard when this came out, and I get to use this again. And I probably wouldn't put this on Twitter, but Bryce, I just sent it to your Hey account. Okay. This is from The Onion in 1998. Interesting. This is a trailer for The Fast and the Furious 10. <laughs> no. 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 Gee. All right. I see. Got this. All right. So we're pulling this up from our friends at TheOnion.com. Russian scientists announced six month delay in carving a new space station. <laughs> Out of rock. <laughs> they, no, they have like like dead photos of guys like carving out of wood. <laughs> it's like Oi, two on the nose. Space is space is difficult. I believe it. I believe it's difficult. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I'm ready to call it rocket science yet. <laughs> More yeah. like carpentry. <laughs> the the. Another pair, major setback occurred just two years later when a pair of vagrants jimmied open the lock on the space station's mandatory hatch and spent the night in it. They urinated all over the place, Chief Engineer Tagat Musabaya said. This created serious problems, and the floor had yet been vanished and sealed. <laughs> uh, 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 
you, you, you know who never has these problems who? are uh, us because of our fabulous patrons That's at right. patreon.com slash weird things. That's right. That's where you keep us on the regs uh, by regulations or by regs. Mm-hmm. We don't mean regulations. We mean on the regular every single week we show up to talk about uh, Sasquatch and all kinds of goblins and spiders. The answer is always snakes and occasionally space trap things space things yeah uh head on over to patreon.com slash weird things plus you get our sister show after things a couple days earlier that's where we talk about being creative professionals how we get stuff done some behind the scenes talk you know if you if you liked world's greatest con we did a lot of it we did a couple of episodes talking about some of the behind the scenes on that so uh make sure you check it out patreon.com slash weird things so what's still on the on the space beat, what's been frustrating you know this has been very frustrating for blue origin because you've got an incredible team of people there really great uh, you know, really great vision for what they want to do. And they've, you know, they've been building these BE4 engines and there's an article that came out uh, uh, about Eric Berger wrote an article about, you know, why they're late and what's been going on at that. And then it's, it's just space is really, really hard to do that. But also they put out this infographic that's sort of like criticizing uh, the whole another infographic about the whole starship program which is sort of interesting about why their space you know their moon rockets better than you know the spacex system and you get the idea that there was probably like i think they had a lot a lot riding on getting that contract uh i would love better than a space race would be a space infographic race where all people do <laughs> is crap on each other's infographics and point out how they they have failed to advance uh infographics yeah and this one had a couple little technical errors in it too but it was still it was still a you just i get the feeling they hate spacex over at blue origin i i i i mean this is corporate competition right there's a lot of money at yes. stake this is uh literally you know new territory being being conquered so we're sony we're, we're sega versus nintendo territory now uh which which does make it kind of interesting because uh i i believe there was uh one headline i read about uh elon musk saying yeah i'll take a ride on virgin galactic that sounds fun like which is kind of low key a signal that it's like i am not threatened at all by your your wacky uh, floaty plane uh well, he's fr- i mean he was he was there on the day of launch hanging out with richard branson too sure 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 but right. but, but also yeah. that's a good way to sort of solidify your position as king is to be magnanimous in victory uh, and yeah. and to maybe a lesser competitor you know right right like- exactly to refuse to acknowledge number two like like right. ah we here at Coke love RC Cola. It's the best. If you're not going to have Coke, well, he, have he, RC he's, Cola. He, <laughs> Elon has said, I wish Jeff spent more time at Blue Origin. He's said, because he thinks, you know, he's spoken highly of, of Bezos and thinks that, you know, Blue Origin would benefit from Bezos being more hands-on. He's been, because his, I think, I think Elon's view of space is kind of like, he watched, he watched the internet in being an active participant in the early 90s when remember early 90s like well who's going to be the biggest company on the internet it's going to be cisco is it going to be worldcom you know who's it going to be and it's like biggest player yeah ain't even here yet and it's going to be bigger than you realize and so like worrying about like yeah elon worrying about blue origin now is like you know some local internet company worrying about you know the tallahassee tile up whatever it's like space News alert. Space is big. Space is really big. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I'm, I, I think that's a fantastic way to a perspective to have is like when we think about space, when, when, when we get to a point where we are interfacing with space regularly, the, 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 the players probably, yeah, we probably don't even know the names today. They probably either don't exist, haven't been started or, will be spun you know like i'm got, I'm not using net zero anymore but that used to be that that was the thing when we back in the day yeah well you had uh you had right now like we we didn't ever really talk about relativity space relativity space was a number of former spacex people and they're doing a lot of like 3d manufacturing and you know rocket lab we mentioned they're building a fuller a larger rocket they're going to try to go for full reusability there's just you know <clears throat> Things are moving fast. Uh, you know, there's a few other companies I'm missing too. 
you know, so it's, it's, yeah, it's like very exciting. So, you know, one of these small players, you know, could come up with some other different approach and who knows. Wow. Hey, uh, the guy in Germany got a fine. We don't know his name because of their pri privacy laws, but we'll call him Klaus. Klaus, Klaus got a fine. Klaus got fine? Klaus he got, got a fine. fine. Now what? Okay, hold on now. I was on the phone with Klaus just the other day. Mm -hmm. He didn't and, mention a fine? Because well, usually he talks about his fines pretty up front. Well, he yep. says that he is fine. I ask how he's doing, and he says fine. I didn't know he meant that he's he was assessed a fine. fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe, what, maybe. What did, he, did he do something wrong? Is he too old? I is mean, there an, do they have? Is it is it Logan's Run a universe in Germany right now? What's up? I mean, I don't, I don't, I. Kudos. I on don't the see Logan's it in anything wrong. By the way, yeah. <clears throat> I, I had. <clears throat> pardon me. I'm emotionally overcome. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I know a friend who did the same thing. He didn't get fined. It was cool. Klaus got fined. Hmm. Uh, uh, uh. Just, man, I've had my head in the clouds ever since we started talking about space. We're talking about a terrestrial thing that he did. That uh, Earth crimes. Earth, Earth crimes. Earth crimes. Right. Okay. Uh, we're Earth crimes. Let's get Earth fines. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so, so when Klaus did it, it got a fine. But when Andrew's friend did it, and no fine. Friend of the family, yeah. Friend of yeah. the family. Uh, was it was it that he got caught? Is it something where maybe people do it normally, but usually they don't get caught doing it? No, not too normal. Neighbor neighbor tipped off the cops. Oh, the neighbor found out. Did did it involve yeah. affecting another living creature's life? Like was did he poke an eye or something? Or yeah. No, 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 no. Did so he, wait, is this a victimless crime? For which he was fined? Yeah, was there a victim? Brian, it's a great way, great question. On one hand, you could say completely victimless crime, or you could say it's part of the well, greatest crime against humanity ever. Really hard to say. Did there are either no victims or there are a lot of victims? Was, was he a Holocaust denier? I don't know what his personal opinions are. <laughs> Maybe uh okay, okay here here's a guess was it was it littering like you know like yeah, uh, sometimes people that that's affecting everybody but also maybe nobody yeah no it wasn't littering oh. I mean it was it was, it was it was all in his house all confined in his house did he did he was he doing genetic modifications on things mm, homemade CRISPR no that would be cool though okay okay. 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 Hmm. Did he invent new whippets? <laughs> whippets too. The sequel to Whippets. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna uh, take I'm gonna silence the silence <laughs> as assent. Uh, no. 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 Uh, was it? Um. Okay. Was it? Was it something having to do with his with his purse with Klaus's person? Was you know like was he? I don't know, doing illegal workouts or running around nude uh, with the windows open. I don't know. Did is that illegal? Did he get a tattoo that says Scientology is real? Uh... <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Did it Did it just involve oh, Klaus or did it involve uh, actually, another? Uh, how much of a fine did oh, he get? Yeah. We should probably know that. That'd be helpful. Uh, he has... Um... Because if it's fine, if it's five marks, then that's probably something small. But if it's like fifty thousand marks eh, or five hundred, three hundred thousand dollars, three hundred thousand dollars, and 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 did it involve software? No. No. Oh. How do you? An how analog. do you get fined that much without? And no nudity. No. No nudity. No software. Somehow you get three hundred thousand dollar fine. And no one did, got did hurt. Buy a house in Austin or something. <laughs> Um, did he oh uh, uh um maybe uh, 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 oh i was gonna say like cruelty to animals no oh no sorry i'm just proposing things to try <laughs> <laughs> all right so it was in his house his neighbor reported him uh is it is it is it covid related no okay okay Okay. Okay. Hold on. Uh, sidebar. 
Yeah. Uh, rice. Let's go. Dude, what else is left? I don't, I don't. We're talking about genetic engineering. We're talking about violation. Uh, we, we ruled out. Well, we, we kind of walked up, around I violence. Up the Nazis. He walked right past it. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what else. Is it, oh, uh, okay. Duh. We got to try this. Okay. Andrew, was it snakes? No. Damn it. God. Wait, what, what did you ask me about Nazis, by the way? Just out of curiosity. Oh, if he was a Holocaust, if he was a Holocaust denier. Yeah. Is he a neo-Nazi? I have no evidence of that. Okay. Did, wait, wait. Did he design? Especially no evidence of the neo part either. Did he deny? Oh, wait. Oh, he's old. And, oh, was he an original Nazi? Oh, wait. <gasps> wait. Did he finally? Is he one of those old dudes that finally got arrested? You're like, oh, you shouldn't have Nazi. You Nazi. Here's a fine. He's 84, so he would have been like a teenage Nazi with like a learner's permit. Uh -huh, okay. Uh huh. Okay. Uh -huh. And no. 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 Okay. Did he steal Hitler's I paintings? I would say it's Nazi, it's Nazi adjacent. Okay. <gasps> uh, 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 was he? Wait. Uh, was it? Did it involve a hate crime? Did he do a hate crime? I mean, it's it's Europe. Hard to define what that means. Oh, and anything. and well, and, I, and let's not me forget. Me saying that's probably a hate crime. A Andrew did say if his Andrew said Andrew's friend did this and did not get a fine. So, was it drawing a cartoon? No. Okay. <laughs> was it about something that Klaus owns? Is there something in? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Did was okay, he hoarding Nazi gold? No, Memorable. not holding, not hoarding uh, Nazi gold. Wait, 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 wait. Outfits? Was it? Was it? Was it? Was it? Was it? Was no it uh, a, 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 a Hitler related China? No. Okay. No. He had to think about it, though. He had to think about it. No, I had to think what the hell he just said. Oh, I see. <laughs> uh, no, 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 I meant, I meant like, you know, tea wear. Um, yeah. yeah I, I was afraid that his friend was me because I definitely bought some, like, <laughs> Hitler-related <laughs> teacups when I was in uh, uh, Hungary or Turkey. They're, they're the ones where they, they, well, you put it up to your lips and it puts a little mustache <laughs> <on>. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, so he's got he's got some sort of contraband. We you know, Germany's got very strong uh anti-Nazi laws. Yes, yes, yes. Now, a little what, too late if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> and so but it's not it's it's it doesn't seem like it's memorabilia. It doesn't uh, but Was he wearing is, a t-shirt that said Hotsy Nazi? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. All right. Are you ready for this? Okay. Ready. You're Hit pretty us. close. You're <laughs> pretty close. Oh, no. Pretty close uh, with Hotsy so Nazi. <laughs> his neighbors, his neighbors tipped him off because they thought he might have had art from art, stolen art from World War II in his possession. And so the police show up and they go open up the doors, the garage doors. And what do they find? A Panzer tank. Oh! <gasps> A whole tank? <laughs> a whole tank. A whole tank. Actually, suddenly a uh, fine not only makes sense, but also sounds rad. It's like, yeah, uh, I'll pay your fine for having the uh, world's greatest Jeep. <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and it was there was more Look to it than it. that, too. They also found uh, an 8.8 centimeter caliber anti-aircraft gun, a torpedo, a mortar, machine guns, assault rifles, machine pistols, and more than 1,000 rounds of ammunition. That was a little bit of a problem, too. Yeah. Well, yeah. when they asked him what's up, he said, oh, these street kids, they're everywhere. You have to show dominance. <laughs> I go. I get I get Klaus Bar from restaurant. Klaus, you go get a Klaus Bar? A Klaus Bar. Yeah. Yes, I name so Bar after self. You made the bar. Oh, yes, it's interesting. I make with chocolates but want to deliver you very safely. Mm. Street ruffians always snapping. Uh, Napping in time, and you yeah. need a—you re really just need to <laughs> take a tank to the I whole situation. I take tank, yes. I I take a tanker. Now, what about the anti-aircraft? Okay. I don't like aircraft either, but you know, so far no bother. Hey, you know, I I, I understand that jet noises, man. They're, yes, it's, they're full of Karens in the sky, I, arguing I, over I gotta, seats. I gotta read you <laughs> the Gizmodo <laughs> editorial, the, the editorialization of the last paragraph. Huh. Uh, at 84 years old, the unnamed uh, he's so he's been given time to sell it to a museum, and apparently some unnamed museum in the U.S. is interested. And I think I know what it is. 
At 84 years old, the unnamed man would have been born in the, in the late 1930s and too young to fight World War II. And while the man's political sympathies are unclear, it seems unlikely that anyone but a Nazi would want to own a Nazi tank and weapons for their home, in which case, good riddance. Dude, that's lies. Yeah, I, I would I, love to own a Nazi tank. <laughs> put that, put that, put out the press release. If anybody I, has I, a would, Nazi I like tank, to, I will take it. I would like the Nazi shirt. I would like have battles, and the Nazis would always w lose. Well, but, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, look, was... you got to have characters from both sides. You have to have, you know, the same people who are marketing Darth Vader merchandise are gonna are gonna shame me for having a Nazi tank. Yeah, Disney. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just because yeah, you have so. the word space in front of Hitler doesn't make him not Hitler. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. So uh, we had a, a, our friend, I mentioned this guy before, uh, Walt Omanoffer was a friend of my father, interesting guy. He had a Panzer tank and somewhere there's a photo of my dad and Walt driving down the street in this tank because he had to put wheels on the thing. Oh my um, gosh. Which, you know, kind of, kind of awesome. Walt Can was you... the guy. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just that... now imagining someone getting a possession of a tank, jo having a innocent joy ride and then like the military engaging thinking it's like an, an assault. I mean, it's that's just, like, like, I think the reverse would be true. It's like uh, uh, you could take an actual military tank, go drive it down the street, and the, 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 the police will show up saying, like, dude, launch a T-shirt over here. <laughs> like, that's what they're most likely to think is going on. Like, I love Surge. Bring it back. <laughs> Bring it back. Yeah. That's what you need. That's how you put Surge livery on the tank, the decals and stuff. It's just a promotional material. It's the new, it's the new hot dog mobile. The Surge <laughs> tank. I'm just gonna get in this tank, random, <laughs> and take it back home. The 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 funny thing about that whole uh, the thing, funny thing about Walt is, remember the whole exploding whale when they exploded the whale on the beach? Yeah, sure, oh, sure. Walt's a guy I mentioned. Walt was the guy who was there, who was he was a former munitions expert in the military. He tells him, "Don't blow this thing up." This is not the way to do it. This is a really bad idea. And like the Florida Department of Transportation, or excuse me, Oregon Department of Transportation is like, oh, we know what we're doing. We got this. It's like, no. Walt has the guy that had the brand new car and literally it written on the side was a whale of a deal and a big piece of blubber came down and crashed oh. on his car. Is that, is that, I mean, that clip is older than any of us. Um, mm -hmm. 1970. Does that mean we could get away with playing it? right now on Twitch for anybody who hasn't seen it because some number We've played of played it plenty of times before. Plenty is, you know, negotiable. I mean, like uh, watching, well, uh, oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, if, if you're not familiar, uh, there is a uh, big old dead whale and somebody thought, you know, it'd be a smart way to get rid of things is to blow it up. Um, and, uh, and here it is, 1970. <laughs> like that seems like it worked. No, it doesn't. What? I mean, until now. You hear the cheers, <laughs> and then the bits of whale fall, and you hear the screams. It sounds like foley work. Any one of those people might be about to die, and it just sounds like the pitter patter of exploded whale meat. Oh my gosh. Oh, so good. Uh. Gotta find whale of it. I gotta find the old article, which is. If you look up, type type that in and type in uh, uh, "exploding whale, whale of a deal." Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, then then we can fire the photo of the destroyed car that says "whale of a deal" and has whale destroying it. Yeah, you'll see this from uh. Walt's son talking about this. Um. Yeah, that was the slogan at the time of the, he goes, my dad bought it from Old's Dunham Cadillac, Oman Offer said, and their slogan at the time was, come on in, we'll give you a whale of a deal. I mean, uh, and apparently uh, state of Oregon paid for the car to be replaced. I guess it was then like the story and money you won. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let me read uh, this story. Uh, Kelly yeah. Elmanoffer tagged along on a business trip with his dad 45 years ago in the family's brand new car from Dunham Oldsmobile. The man, the four-year-old's father, was meeting November 12, 1970, was watching a 45-foot 
eight-ton whale that washed up on the beach, and the Oregon Highway workers tasked with removing the carcass from the sand. So I'm all excited, and it went over my dad. They're going to blow it up, 20 cases of dynamite. My father said, I think you misheard him. I think he said 20 sticks. <laughs> I don't recall. And I said, no, he said 20 cases. Oh, my God. <laughs> and he goes, after they blew it up, everybody is watching off. And then 30 seconds later, blam, blam, blam. Then everything's going. There's a huge chunk of whale blubber getting thrown at us. So, so then there's people running everywhere, scattering. Then there's whale blubber everywhere. Even the camera and left his camera went running, as did the reporter. It's smart. <laughs> They're all smart people. Yeah. So anyhow, uh, Panzer tanks, whale blubber. What can I say? Gentlemen, time for picks. Hmm. Uh, we're going to talk about it again later, but I watched the Suicide Squad twice. Or at least well. one and a half times. Like I watched it in the movie theater and then I watched it with my kid far enough to realize like, oh yeah, there's a reason we have movie theaters and it's so that our kids aren't with us when we're watching movies. Um, uh, mm -hmm. it, was, it was better than I heard the first one was, but, but, uh, but I guess a box, box office disappointment, question mark? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It was great. I thought it was it was a lot of fun. I watched it on HBO Max. I didn't I didn't go to a theater for it. Uh, it was it was a lot of fun. I mean, the the I, I was talking about it on Twitter with someone. I was and I think the only criticism I would give it is like maybe maybe wrap up that last act a little faster. But like it's it's a lot of fun. It's really well written. There there are enough surprises and. By the end, you kind of realize the magic trick of the franchise bait that they want this to be. Like, oh no, here are the people we're gonna use over and over again, but the way that they get there is is fun, and it doesn't feel like uh, I don't know. It doesn't all feel like a setup to make the Suicide Squad two, if that makes sense. You know, it felt like we've got a really cool, engaging story, and and really uh, really cool characters. I I enjoyed it. I had. It was funny because, like, yeah, they're all oh, box office disappointing because, like, you know, my girlfriend, like, oh, yeah, we'll go see Suicide Squad this weekend. We'll use our AMC movie passes. We'll go see it. I'm like, cool. And I go HBO. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is on HBO. Ooh, I'm like, we got a busy weekend. Let's just go watch it. So we watched it Friday night. You know, we ate, you had popcorn and, you know, watched it at home and enjoyed it. And that's, if it hadn't been on HBO Max, yeah, we would have seen it in the theaters. And that, I think a lot of, I think their box office take would have been much higher. So mm -hmm. unlike, the difference between that and uh, Black Widow was you had to you have to pay twenty five bucks on Disney Plus 30. to watch Black Widow. Thirty, 30 bucks. yeah, thirty on top of Crazy. also paying for Disney Plus. Disney Plus, yeah. yeah. So I think that's that was sort of a big difference here was just the fact that like, uh, but yeah, I enjoyed. It. I really liked it. I Guardians is still his best movie. First one, um, mm -hmm. second one's a bit of a. It's you weird. Know, sit here, wait for something to happen moment. But this was fun, enjoyable. But you know, Guardians, I thought, was just, you know, was a magical movie. But this was fun. It just is him writing, you know, really well written, really good storytelling. But I didn't walk away going, oh my God, you got it. Yeah. It did uh, deliver by that third act, that rarest and most valuable of all things in movies, a uh, genuine surprise. Like, are they really gonna? Are they really gonna? Oh, they really are. Okay. This is where, this is where we're at. This is how this movie ends. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. It's just, it feels like a big spectacle. Uh, you know, it's just a good, fun, I don't know. I, I It's great. I, I think it's great. And it being on HBO Max makes it a lot easier to, to recommend rather than a whole like go to the theater and go and get popcorn and sit and go into all that stuff. Yeah. You know that they, so you know that they're doing the Peacemaker TV series for HBO, right? HBO Max or HBO? Mm. No, I had not heard that. Already shot eight episodes in the can gun shot like six out of eight. Oh wow. wow okay they they got a lot of confidence and i think it's earned i mean i think they've, they've got good characters here yeah yeah so um i've got a preemptive pick i've got i've got an assumptive pick i've i've started watching this um it's i have not seen i'm not caught up with it um but my friends are like obsessed with talking about this this is a new hbo series called the white lotus I don't know if you guys have heard about this or seen about this. Um, it is, uh, I don't know how to describe this show, by which I mean, I don't know what genre of show this is. I, I started watching it and I thought, oh, 
this is a murder mystery, right? They start up and they say like, oh yeah, you know, uh, uh, oh, you were at the White Lotus Resort. I heard somebody died there. And you watch the guy and he watches them put the body on, uh, but a, you know, a body box on a plane. And you're like, oh, they're setting up the big murder mystery. And then I started episode two and I thought, I don't think this is a murder mystery. I think this is, a, I think it's supposed to be a satire of rich people and rich people problems. The idea is, you follow a group of people as they go and spend a week at this resort in Hawaii, the White Lotus, and it's a high-end resort, and they're all, you know, rich and powerful, and they still find problems. and And I, I don't, I don't exactly know what this is. I'm, I'm two episodes in. I think there's like six episodes right now, and I don't know if this is setting up a mystery box or if this is meant to be like an, an arrested development type satire. What, what, uh, uh, bef before Andrew chimes in, uh, what are you, what are you hoping this will be? I, I mean, uh, selfishly, I wish that I would love for this to be like a, a whodunit, right? They, the very first thing that happens in the very first episode is they tell you somebody died at the resort and then they flash back seven days. And so to me, all I want to know is, okay, who did die? They kind of can't give you a hint, but if this was a whodunit, then that would be a red herring. There would be mis, you know, there would be all these misdirections, um, and I, I kind of hope that that's the case because I think the otherwise the storylines are maybe a little uh, banal. They're a little like plain, um, but I don't, I don't know. I, that that's what's really fascinating to me is I'm watching the show and and all of my friends are obsessed with it, and. I really don't know what we're doing here, which is a really, which is really cool. I don't think that there are a lot of shows that do that. I don't know. Andrew, did you, had you seen some of this? No, no, I've seen it. I just, I just, it's funny. Like, ah, you know, making fun of rich people. I'm like, God, ah, it's like Hollywood on Hollywood, you know, rich people making movie TV shows about rich people. <laughs> sort of it's sort of the, the other line. Um, I have no, no, I have no, I saw, I couldn't make out from like the description, what this was going to be about. Right. So here's the IMDb like, description. Uh, it notes, Fantasy Island, you know. It says it's a comedy and a drama set in a tropical resort. It follows the exploits of various guests and employees over the span of a week, which is like either either a really a uh, very good description of a very boring show or would be a very interesting facade for a surprise to come later. But I don't know that that's what that th what this is. So I I don't I I'm I'm preemptively picking it because I think the little bit that I've seen so far is good, and I uh, my understanding is it's really good. So I'm on board. If that sounds interesting to you, maybe check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that is that is a full on endorsement <laughs> from Bryce Castillo. I'm two thumbs, <laughs> kind of up. Yeah. <laughs> two uh, your two thumbs. Uh, <laughs> let me know how it goes. Yeah, let me know. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> And you got to pick. Yeah, have you seen? Have you seen the? Uh, you ever seen the African Queen? Uh, oh, the movie from the what? Nineteen sixties, forties, nineteen fifty one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I have not. Uh, have you? You watched it recently? I did, and I, I, I'd never seen it. And it's one of these movies that people when you talk about lists of favorite movies. Uh, that does not look like Catherine Hepburn on the poster, by the way. Uh, uh, two, it is Bogart and Hepburn playing very, very good, very clearly good characters. It's one of the reasons why there's a lot of love for Bogart and Hepburn, too, because Bogart liked to play uh, not the, the the normal leading man types. He's a guy that started off in gangster movies and doing those kinds. And so by the time you see him do Maltese Falcon, where he plays, you know, when he Maltese Falcon, he plays, you know, Sam Spade, who's a guy who is, you know, sleeping with his partner's wife and all this. He's just sort of this, he loves this treasure, the Sierra Madre. He's the villain. He's a bad guy in that. Right. So here he plays this guy who runs this little steamboat up and around, you know, in Africa. And he's not the most sophisticated guy at all. And he plays it really well. There's a great scene where he's at having tea and he, his stomach just won't stop making noises, you know, and he's just, <laughs> It's just, it's a delightful movie, and I never knew really what it was about. And then I watched what it was about, I'm like, oh, this is really cool. Like, I thought it was just kind of like, you know, like a heaven knows Miss Allison or something. Like, oh, the guy and the, the prim woman, they have to go from point A to point B. And a little more, like, it's it's it involves the German occupation in World War One of, you know, parts of Africa. And, oh. uh, 
I mean, do you want a spoiler or? <laughs> yeah, I mean, go go for it. I, I, yeah. I don't think so. I was... So there. Yeah. The point is, he's he's for the Germans take over. He's trying to help her out, and she's determined. We got to go torpedo this German boat out on the lake. We need to go do that, and that's what they're going to try to go do. Is they're going to take their little the little steamboat down the river, navigate the most harsh you know parts of Africa to navigate, and they're going to go try to blow up a German boat. Which I loved that. I thought it was like. Oh, a delightful little romance where you know they fall in love over some trying to go on some journey. Like, no, she's like, we gotta just we gotta kill the Germans. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Wow, so that's cool. That, that knowing that will I should hopefully enhance her interest in the movie. Not it, it make oh, there's more to it than you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, the reverse of that is uh, uh, we watched a uh, uh, Jungle Cruise with uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, which and, was influenced uh, by this. I I, I I very much believe it now because it's like watching this movie. It's like uh, I just pictured the Disney writers' room where they're all like, uh, "All right, who's left? Uh, snakes, uh, bugs, and Germans. That's that's all that's left that can be just just <laughs> bad guys." <Yep. laughs> and so, guess the, the, guess who the bad guys are? <laughs> snakes, <laughs> bugs, and Germans. And that the 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 movie, I mean the 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 Jungle Cruise ride was influenced by the movie African Queen, and then when they go to make finally a Jungle Cruise movie, influenced again. Uh, so I I, I highly recommend watching African Queen. What do you think of Jungle Cruise? Uh, I I thought it 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 did it worked harder than it needed to. I hmm. I, I I thought uh, the first thirty minutes were adorable. Uh, I was buckled up for a The Mummy experience instead. Uh, uh, like I, I, it was. <laughs> there, there was some moment where they they had a brief moment. They were like, "What do we do now?" And I couldn't help but whisper, "Get fast passes for Rise of the Resistance." <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it it very much is exactly what you would think it would would be. It it delighted me more than the Suicide Squad, to be honest with you. Like, if you uh -huh. asked me to go watch one movie again, I'd probably watch the Jungle Cruise again. Oh, wow. Because part of the Suicide Squad I loved, but the best jokes you saw them ten times in the trailers. Sure, sure. Uh. Yeah, I, 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 I just uh, Jungle Cruise, like I said, went went the long way around. Added a lot of lore that that I don't know needed to be there. Mm, maybe understood. Maybe it's that's them setting up, you know, like pirates a franchise. Or no, I mean, I, to, to Brian's point, it's like how do you how do you turn the Jungle Cruise into a movie? And like, well. Well, there's this and there's a lot. There's yeah, there's a lot of layers. And I get I get 100 percent where you're going. And there's a lot of things like I could have, probably could have been streamlined. I would have enjoyed it as much. But uh, the total your point. I still like it's not fun. Like I like I thought there were more twists than that than the Suicide Squad. Cool. Both good. Go see them both. Hmm. Why not both? <laughs> yeah, why not? Gentlemen, it's been weird. <laughs> All righty. Hey, good show. Yeah. All right. We'll take a minute and uh, get ready for uh, for after things. Yeah. Take your take a break. Hello, everybody. It's so weird to walk inside from like, you know, 97 degrees. And then you, you're in the room and you know, like logically that it's 68 degrees in here. Mm -hmm. But it takes about one full episode of weird things to finally get your body to realize it. <laughs> and you're like. <laughs> Oh, it's kind of chilly in here. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> you're like, I'm going to put on my socks. I'm going to step outside again into that 97 degree. Why are you even going out? Why are you going out there? Because that's where that's where the bushes are that I pee in. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so BRB. <laughs> Hello, everybody. We will uh, start after things here in just a few uh, moments. How did everybody have a, how was everybody's weekend? Um, I, 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 you know, I was, I was reoccupied a bit last week with uh with uh getting a getting a new getting that new car uh, uh i ended up uh, i ended up doing doing the car max thing you know uh that's what i did last time with my with my previous car and i don't know it's just easier it's just easier you know they they do checks on it so it's not gonna be a clunker and they give you they give you 30 days so i'm gonna take it to a garage and have them have them check it out and and do stuff uh, you know make sure everything's everything's working the the one thing i did find was uh the parking brake the button on the parking brake pops off 
Oops. Pops off and it's not always the easiest thing. Sometimes it's a two hand situation to get it back in because you got to get it on the actual uh, lever on the actual line. Otherwise, it's a pretty nice car. Yeah, it's a pretty nice car. Pretty low, decently low mileage for being almost 10 years old, but uh, it's nice. I think it's I think it's pretty nice. And um, so I got a, I got a Honda Civic. I got a, I got a 2012 Honda Civic, and uh, yeah, I dig it. It's got it's it's a little it's a little what is uh, what's interesting is it like it's not very zippy uh, at highway speeds, but it does a pretty good job at like. <laughs> surface street speeds um which was like kind of the opposite for my previous car my previous car had a had a nice v6 in it that i that i do miss it would, it would really it would really get going where it takes a civic a minute to 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 catch up with everybody a little bit um but uh, the handling I like the nice handling it's kind of got that spaceship look inside it's bluetooth that's that's interesting you guys ever noticed you ever noticed this um for whatever reason, the the Bluetooth in a car is always like five seconds delayed. Like it's always slower than like in my previous car. I had, I had and not even after. I guess after I was just like in a little accessory, just plugged into an aux port, a little Bluetooth receiver, and that was like you know pretty pretty good in terms of audio sync. But you can't can't do it with the hands free link. It's got to take five seconds. Just weird. This is a little weird. Cliff Singer says we have an 08 Civic Hybrid going on 200,000 miles. The hybrid part is crap, but it's been a good car. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, my, I, I it, it would have been nice if a hybrid was in, um, was it was in my price range, um, but because my car broke down instead of me trading it in, which I was gonna do last year. Last year when I paid it off, I thought I was considering, oh, I can trade it in, and I could get something a little nicer. Nope. Nope. I drove it into the ground, but I found actually I found a I found a little garage that would like that did give me a little something something for it. Not a lot, not the you know two or three grand it would have been worth, but give me a little something something. Give me a little a little bit of walking around money for it. So that's not the worst thing in the world. Oh yeah. But um. But yeah, I think the only kind of yeah, it's it's weird. I'm so I'm so I'm so getting used to it. But it's but it's it's pretty it's pretty nice. I'm not used to being small. It's 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 a compact instead of a a midsize, and so I'm used to I'm used to the my my previous my Avenger my previous car. It's a little bigger, you know. Now I like slot it in. It's it's just it's, it's small. It's small, but it doesn't. I don't know. Anyway, car talk. Hi, welcome to car talk. Uh, but, 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 but. Um, and then yeah, what else happened this weekend? Yeah, I was I watching watching White Lotus. I, I'm just I'm so confused about that show. I I was uh I was chatting with my friends because it's it's still airing on HBO, so it's coming out every week. But I was chatting with my friends. I'm like, oh yeah, the guy, this guy, he's just you know what it is is he, he's uh, in the first episode one of the characters has this um has has this conflict with the resort manager of like oh yeah well we booked the honey room the honey the newlywed suite we booked the we booked this nice suite not this one that you gave us we had a, we're supposed to have a private pool um and he makes such a big stink out of it and such a it's such a small thing that in my head i'm like oh my gosh he wanted that specific room he wants to kill his wife that's and she's the one who dies and he wants to use the pool and it's private or he can blink and and that's what's going on here and i don't I, th I think it's just that he's just kind of a jerk. I think he's just kind of a kind of meant to be a uh, uh, a persnickety kind of jerk. Talking about Hannibal? Uh, no, talking talking more about White Lotus still. Mm. Uh, I'm I'm so I'm fascinated by it because it's not, I don't know if it's I you know sometimes a show is like trying to set up a mystery box right Lost or Manifest any of these you know supernatural mystery shows. I don't. I don't even know if that's this. It, it's. It's so. I. I don't know. I. I like, just love the. Hey oh, man, setting up mysteries. That's what my my bro does. I, I just hang out. I'm the cool one. <laughs> yeah. I just hang out and talk about the, the rich people or whatever. Um. I don't know. Um. Alrighty. We uh. Want to do some after things? Yeah. 
I don't, I don't know if we quite. Uh, by the way. What by the, the way. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh. Everybody, hold on, hold on. I'll let, I'm let, I'll let you say something. First, I got I to gotta say something. Okay. Ready. Um, all I'll say is tomorrow, Tuesday, August 10th, 10 a.m., hmm. twitch.tv slash open AI. Oh right, we didn't oh. plug that. Why, uh, do you do you want to do a little? Do you want to get a? Do you want to record a wild line to no, put in the? No, time anybody listens to it, it'll be too late. It's fine. Okay, is that is that going to be up anywhere? Because I re I've gotten your email about it and I want to I but I don't think I'll be able to watch it live. No, that's different than what I'm doing. Oh, okay. Uh, did you want to do a wild line for that thing? No, it's fine. Okay. Uh, uh, but yeah, just telling you guys tomorrow. 10 a.m. twitch.tv slash open AI. Yeah. Hit that follow yeah. button and get the bell. Ring the bell. Ding, ding, ding. That's all I can say. <laughs> okay. Uh, all righty. Well, uh, we want to do a, a nice little after things here. Ooh. Oh, okay. I thought I, you, were, you, were, you were going so far away. I thought you were like, uh, uh, that was a bug. So, so like even now you, you can hear something, right? I can hear something. It's there's actually kind of a staticky sort of situation with it. Yeah. Uh, more so than the actual like, I don't even know if I should use it or not. You know what I can do is how about this? Not cough. Right? That's that's not the worst. Uh, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> it's better than hearing the coughing. <laughs> um alrighty. Well, uh let's see, making sure am I still going? I'm still going. Cool. Well, um, you want to do some after things? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'll count you in, Andrew. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello. Finally, the two of us together. Oh, wait. Yeah. Sorry. Hold on. There's somebody Ooh. at the door. Can it's... I join too? No. This is Bryce I'm, Castillo. I'm coming in now. I Excuse me. Hello. Right in... Oh, now he's here. Oh, thank you for He's having climbing me. through the window. The window. She's out right Have you thought about a bigger window? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. That's uh, Bryce. Great. <laughs> Classic. That's just. That's... Yeah. Mm. All right, gentlemen, uh, this is what I want to ask you all. I'm curious. Here we are. It's 2021. Uh, the year has just begun. Oh, uh, oh no, it's actually. <laughs> it's oh, like no, it is actually almost. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> this is not a joke. <laughs> Andrew.exe and Bryce.exe oh. both simultaneously locked up. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, uh, I was joking to somebody yesterday it's like yeah like august is when you kind of reach that point where you're like oh this year's almost over, almost over. and i was still trying to figure out what i was gonna do this year mm. yeah yeah and then and then of course you know we were like ah oh, when the pandemic's over and then i'm the delta variant ha <laughs> ha yeah. I'll tell you what, man, that uh, like, like that's no joke. Uh, looking at the, uh, ICU beds in Austin, like, uh, we're, we're about to hit, uh, this is our third wave. We're about to run out of ICU beds again. Mm -hmm. Which is so, a bummer. Yeah. I'm not going to be that guy. Okay. Good show. But, oh, okay. <laughs> it, is it, is, I mean, that's the thing I've heard, like, well, emerging rooms are always like the capacity. They're always the capacity. Like, I don't know. I, I don't, I, I don't. That, that's also what I've heard is it's, that it's, ICUs are they will find a reason to people put people in the ICU when correct. they have beds. Correct. It's it's sort of like saying uh, uh, the best seats are all taken. Right. It's like, well, that's the purpose of, of having the best seats is so that they're always all taken. So you, you're correct about that. And I'm like, give vaccine to everybody. I'm like, I'm I, but I'm also like, I've been so I get because then you look at like, you know, like uh, and no people who have died from COVID. Let me get that very clear and very real, very, very real. But also it's like, I'll hear like the, the panic porn gets right. so noisy that I'm like, okay, like, I think we need to do a thing, but also like, I just kind of want, I want real data and not like, and you know, like here's the foot, you know, like it's like in New York city, like, ah, oh, it's gonna be horrible. They sent a hospital ship. They never used it. Okay. 
Um, why? Because millions of billions have died from COVID, and more people will die. That's very clear. I just, I just kind of like that. Well, we got to tell people this, so they'll they'll do what we think. It's like I just, I just. Yeah, I it, it is definitely felt weird. I have seen responses to say mainstream reporting about um, let's call them irresponsible headlines in terms of reporting on uh, Delta wave numbers, right? Like, oh, just as many people who are vaccinated are getting it as unvaccinated people, which is like the the yeah the hard number is the same, but the percentage is is way way dramatically lower yeah, and, it's, and it's like your... that 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 gets that that it is a little bit of of fear mongering and and probably unhelpful because we apparently are taking the stance of co trying to convince people to 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 take to get the vaccine and so yeah and, it, and it's it's that the you're like yeah it's the vaccine you know like it reduces by all evidence reduces the symptoms makes it much easier survivable when you look at the people who you know the the people who go to end up in the ICU is also are often comorbidities, but you know other factors affecting it. And it is a it is this again. I, I'm a I'm I'm a broken. I'm like I I really it it's not just my from my ethical point of view. Like don't try to inflate a thing or try to spin a thing because you've got to control how people think. It backfires. It always backfires. Right. You know, we've got the new headline for like the IPCC report. This is the decade we have. This is the decade that's going to make a difference for climate change. It's like, like, yeah, I believe climate change is real. We got to do things. But if you just say that every other year, we don't care. And here, like I meet people who are so confused by, you know, like the COVID information stuff. Like, well, the, they told us the vaccine would completely protect us. Like, I don't think. I don't think any legitimate person ever said that, but I'm sure there were people who told you this, and I understand why people think that was the case, and they were sold one thing versus another versus like like any other vaccine, proves your ability to fight it off, et cetera. So. The, uh, the heartbreaking part is that uh, the, the written plan as of two years ago, before any of this was a real issue, when it, back when it was hypothetical, like in bold print, the uh, US government plan was whatever you do, no matter how noble it may feel, don't lie to the populace. They'll eventually just learn not to trust you. Mm, the first words out of their mouth is, nobody needs a mask. And it's like, oh, goodness, what are you doing? What are you doing? And that was, and that was, and we've gone into that before. That was a frustrating thing because, well, I talked to this expert and this expert told me this. And then he asked that expert and well, everybody knows it. And they're like, well, what's the original What's the original research on this? Oh, yeah, you know, and then somebody I had a conversation with somebody the other day, like, did you they go, did you know there are 20 million emancipated minors in the United States? I'm like, 20 million? I'm like, there are only not. like 70 or 80 children in the United States. Like, one out of four, like, that can't be right. It couldn't possibly and be like, true. No, and they're like, no, and I got shown an article, and it was from a cafe mom post, and it said, oh, there are 20 million emancipated minors in the United States. I'm like, there is no citation here. There is no source here. This is flat out wrong. But if you type into Google, you know, how many emancipated, emancipated minors the United States are, that result is their info. They're 20 million. And it's flat out wrong. And it's one of these things like citations, not just from, well, this expert told me, you know, and that's, we often go like, well, I read it on this. this <laughs> yes. Oh <my> it's, <laughs> it's, you know, so, I saw, I so saw a similar. Ju just under 10% of the entire United States population <laughs> is emancipated minors. <laughs> I think they're just describing adults. I think this is yeah. describing how many people turn 18 every year. I, I, you know, I saw, I saw a funny similar story of uh, a, uh, uh, incorrect advice that was given in a stack overflow article led to the same glitches happening in different tech stacks because everybody like like half of being a programmer is just stealing Looking from up everything yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah just yeah. grabbing snippets <laughs> and so that's you know that's kind of a funny thing but but yeah i mean you know and like on the google side this is uh what, knowledge graph is that what google's yeah. knowledge stuff is like you know it, usually it's just it just steals everything from wikipedia but even now it like this is a forum post this is or cafemom.com slash news blog but, post but the, uh, hey. it's flat out wrong. And like how many other things are there? And, and it, it is, I guess my point is, you know, when you to embrace critical thinking means you have to give up on the idea that certainty is something you will ever have, but you can right. understand that there, I could be more likely to think something is true or less likely. The beautiful freeing effect is you're not embarrassed when you're wrong. Cause you never really, 
Mm-hmm. You're always like, well, this is what I think. I don't know that this is true, but I think this is likely to be true. And and I and I try to you know get into the point of like people who speak and I speak in definitives and I get caught on it because I'm like never speak in definitives and I do it. But when you speak in definitives, one, it makes for more powerful and more persuasive language to be sure. But also, you get locked into a frame of thinking that's really hard to retract yourself from. Well, and uh, one of the ways to tell whether or not you're falling into that trap is to find out if you're using uh, the word they. Well, now they say, sorry, yeah. who's they and mm-hmm. what are they saying? And, and, and it's like uh, that, that's mm, I, 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 I myself and, catch myself doing and, that. And, and even this other thing, this other story happened uh, over this past week, this, this new Apple iOS 15, uh, ch- you know, uh, child abuse material scanning uh, thing where they will they have all of these systems to keep an eye out for known uh, child abuse material or to, to scan children's eye messages and it's uh, uh, the the short version is it seems like they've made a, a, a tool that has privacy in mind but does seem like it could be a slippery slope argument, but all of that nuance and discussion gets drowned out by Apple is scanning your iPhone for photos of naked people. And it's like, that's not true. And that's distracting from the real conversation we should have about the future and the way that these machines can realistically be augmented. It actually gets a little bit weirder though, Bryce, because there, I read a security researcher who worked with one of the other methods, the similar method that's using the hash thing like this. And he does a really good deconstruction says, Apple's hand waving over this here because they say like, oh, it also includes a a representational thing, symbolic sort of thing that somebody then uses to verify, but your photo's safe. And he's like, no, it's a 20 by, he says, in this system, which this looks like it's based on, that's a 20 by 20 pixel version of your photograph. And they're not calling it that because people would be like, what? And you can tell faces and stuff like this from it. So the problem is, is like they're the oh our method don't worry it's good but we're not going to show you what we're doing so the bad guys don't deconstruct it it's like that that little symbolic sort of thing so i'll send you this and i i don't know what to think because it's way over my head but uh if you go to uh one uh hacker factor oh yes uh, here we go the hacker the hacker factor block because i this i did see that as well and the the title is uh one bad apple We'll, we'll put in the show notes here but uh, this is this is someone who runs a website where you upload and store photos and has had to deal with you know child uh, abuse material as well and uh, I, but I also thought even even this person's uh, certain parts of this person's deconstruction did not seem seemed very pointed right the 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 part about like what is the legality of all this I I thought was. Um, uh, almost naive to think that Apple would not understand their legal responsibility well, around child abuse material. That's not what he claimed he's making. What he's saying is that the Apple's interpretation of their justification for doing it may not fit the legal framework for it. The idea that, 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 you know, Apple, Apple's made this decision and he's sort of saying like, no, they're not legally required to do this, you know, um, you know, so it, it gets, again, I, I don't know, but I do know that he brings up things. He says, like, yeah, no, this isn't clarified here. And this example, this is similar to, they hand wave away what this is. And he also says, how do they know it's one in a trillion? Did they have a trillion images to look with? And he says that these filters, he says he's got an example of this filter triggering a photo of a guy holding money. He's like, yeah, like I've seen, like in my, I've only had like five other photos that ever got flagged. He said that like one or two of them, you know, like, you know, two are false positives. And he's right. like, and so I don't, it's way, it's one of these things. The headlines is you're right. You're 100 percent right that the 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 people reporting on it are getting the data wrong. Then Apple has their own FAQ about it. But then Apple's also dot 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 blah 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 hand waving away certain things. Trust there. us on so this thing, and 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 you know, it, it, I I think a lot of it is because Apple over the past what five years or so has been very privacy focused and saying, you know, we we have in these different parts of your phone and your data, we have no means of scanning it either manually or, or with an automated process. And, you know, even I look at this, at this stuff and I think, well, this implementation, if it is exactly as it's described, seems all right. It would be something I would personally be okay with, but I, I also think that tech wise, it would not be very, very, uh, it would not be very onerous to say, actually, you, now you have to scan for, these things now you have a system and, and a government can tell apple that they have to augment it to 
look for yeah. pictures of Tiananmen Square or dissidents of for uh, any, any counter government or counter any and Hardy clothing <laughs> exactly. Um, so I might be okay with this when I think about it. it it's it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is a, it, it's it 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 feels a little chicken little to say well the slippery slope yeah, slippery that, slope but like c come on I mean that this this is an evolving piece yeah, of of in culture. The, in the San Bernardino case, that was where they had the two shooters, and the FBI wanted access to their phones. And Apple was Apple's position was, we can't, we can't, we we it, it wasn't policy like we can, like, we no, can we give can't. you the or, data no, on it, it, iCloud, but we cannot open the phone for you. Correct. And specifically, I believe their position was um, the only way we could would be to play bad actor. Uh, against ourselves, and that is that is the line that we are not willing to cross. Yeah, they would they would have to rewrite and recreate. You know, yeah, and and make a backdoor in, in so many now words. Now it's right. like now they're saying, well, how do you know this won't be abused? Apple's like, we won't. Like, well, that's different than you can't. Once right. you go to you won't. We already know if you read the history of the NSA, etc. The number of backdoors that have been put into all sorts of other systems is is legion, and. We've seen the abuses of these things. When you see headlines like, you know, secure details leak about this or whatever, we know that our people in power, not all of them, they may have what they perceive to be our best interest in mind, but maybe not following the same ethical map that we think they should follow. These things get abused here and abroad. And like you said, like, yeah, it's a. It also is worth noting that in that particular case, pretty much the government at some point, well, like two, three weeks in, we're like, uh, never mind. It's yeah. fine. Don't, fine. Yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, we, 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 uh, uh, we don't really care if you're good or bad in this situation. They, they bought a device that right. uh, opened, yeah. opened a phone uh, because I think the phone was older or had not been updated into a certain OS. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, it, it, it just feels very weird. And it feels very tough even just talking about it. You know, we, it, like, uh, I, I, I feel like, I, I feel like my stance is to is that we should have a very healthy amount of skepticism towards this. We should be pretty mm -hmm. pretty discerning towards Apple and and the way that they implement this and how they move forward because this we like we've seen backdoors get inserted before and and I, I it, like you and said it it's a, a difference door. between I can't and I won't. Yep, and it is it is a backdoor. It absolutely is a backdoor because if it it's it's. You just change like, well, we compare it with these known folks here. Like, yes, you now have a cryptograph. You have a way to to send update to match, look for matches in photos and send that data to your server. That's called a backdoor. And, you know. It's 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 it. I, I wish it wasn't like the most complicated technical thing on the planet because I could, you know, I I. I understand what machine learning is and I know that, but I don't know anything about crypto, you know, technical cryptography. Uh, so it's, it's very well, tough I to mean, feel it, like you're it, an outsider it, it, and something like that. It, but I mean, it comes down to the idea, like, 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 and I, again, I'm kind of point like, like, there ain't nothing in my club thing I'm embarrassed about. Like I've always lived with my head. Like I'm going to, you know, I'm afraid I get hacked or whatever like this. And so I've never, I just, I, I'm like, I've always assumed anything I have, everything I have could be exposed at one point. So I try to live my life by that way. That being said, I still want to believe that I should have a right to privacy. I still want to believe that. And forgetting that the, the method of it, once they say, yeah, here's a system that will run on your device and flag us. If you have a photo that matches something. Right. Eh. Even if there are layers, even if it's, you have to have so many things like at the end of the day, yeah, that's what happens is it looks for a thing and, and it kind of, it tattles on you, you know, to and, a certain and imagine, degree. And imagine, you know, the music publishers association saying, well, we should scan to make sure that they have an MP3 on their phone that they don't have a license to, that they didn't buy, that that is not a, an official one legally. Like you're going to see, I think, I think they're going to be opening up a door for all of a sudden all like, well, yeah, you should be scanning for music on the phone that they don't own. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like, you know, if, if they have this match and they don't have, you know, we know this has been, this is the torrented version or whatever that's been circulating around. Yeah. They, or flag it. They seed in uh, versions that have, you know, hidden frequencies that uh, that would be a flag of of hey, this is 
this sound, this this frequency is what we it put just, in the illegal versions that we seed out to everybody. I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if that is something at least the MPAA would want to do or the RIAA. Yeah, I mean these these all of a sudden because once you say like we said once you go from we can't to we won't to like well court court order can make you do a lot of things and if that that that. That the hurdle you just jumped across makes it a lot easier to do these other and, things. And and Apple's response to that specific comment was, "We will tell the governments that this machine is not what they think it is." And I don't think that's ever going to stop a government from saying, "Well, and make it, it, it that is, way." And it is and it is a you know comparing against a known database of information, creating a cryptographic phone, you know, a hash of this. That's exactly what that that is. If you want to say like, "Do these images appear here?" or "Does this file appear here?" That's precisely what the. They're they're using this sort of the idea. Well, people don't really understand what we're saying, so we'll just say this is not what it is. It's like, yeah, we will tell them this, and then they'll get security researcher from some other company will come in and say, no, you could do this, and then Apple's going to be compelled to explain why they can't. So, uh, what's the solution to to avoid that? Because what what it sounds like we're all afraid of is a drift where it's like, um, you know, much like the war on drugs, where it's like, oh, we're only doing this to take down giant cocaine dealers, et cetera, et cetera, and it's like, oh wait, well we can also use this for state level crimes and county level crimes and so on. Uh, what what is the alternative outside of just uh, uh, good privacy hygiene? I don't know. I don't. Yeah, because like on device scanning should be safer than on server side scanning. That would create at least uh, would uh, give you the legitimacy of saying you truly do have an end to end encrypted uh, route here with your files, but also we will keep an eye out for uh, uh, these. Um, they they add metadata to files that they would that they believe would trip would trip this sent this system. I mean, I I don't. The thing is that yeah, I don't know. It's so technical. I don't know enough about what is a good I version mean, of this. You can you can opt out by not using iCloud, which with all the nagware and all that is challenging. Right. Uh, you can find out whatever Edward Snowden is using for his phone, and <laughs> you know, when use the other that. The other dif- that like I, the other challenging thing is so that's that's the the child that's the we're gonna scan for these specific things but then the other part was for uh, accounts of children under thirteen and opted in by their parents iMessage will scan uh, photos that come in or out for sensitive material not not uh this is the database of known child abuse material that we have but it's going to look for nudity or explicit materials broadly and even though that is only for accounts of of users who are less than 13 you can't even enable it if you're over 13 years old um that means that they can do it and what is it and then you're you're looking at general um uh general image trends you're looking at what does an image look like? Not does this match one of these millions of images? And and when you if you think that there's a world where you can mix the two of those relatively easily, then I, I well, I mean, in there in Apple's defense on that, that's a different sort of thing where it stays within the sort of the family account and only the family parents are notified. Like, uh, you know, Jimmy's getting nudes from his teacher. You know, um, so. And there, and not to say, oh, it's an easy sort of issue, but it's a separate technical thing. And I, and I could say, like, there is the question of, like, uh, you know, EI, the like, you know, electronic, you know, uh, Freedom Foundation, they have their own whole takedown on that. And I'm like, I, I'm like, I hear their point. I don't know if I agree, but like, it's a different technical thing. So it's like a parent's parents being able to supervise a kid's account that, that I don't have a problem with because the parent is the owner of the account. The parent Correct. is the one that's paying for the service. Sure. Um, but, it, but I, I, I still go back to like, it's all fine if we're in the pen that we say that we're in, but I, 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 I just get very skittish, you know, and 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 so much so that it's hard to even rely on the trust that Apple has built over the past few years. Of like, I, I mean, I know that they Wait. sell the most secure phone in China, but they still sell their they still operate and have to, you, you know, I mean, all the iCloud servers in China are hosted on government servers. Ooh. And it's like that's probably that's still probably the best option for you if you live in China. I mean, it would it's mm-hmm. it's probably better to have the option than to not even have that. But I I don't know I don't know because you just now we're into not just hypotheticals but wild hypotheticals. Everyone coming up with the worst possible situation, and and uh, 
wondering what it looks like when everyone is a bad actor. So I, 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 I don't, and I think that's a very individual response. I think that is a response people are having with themselves. And I, I think compared to clickbait headlines, I think having, having that reaction is, is valid. I don't know. Set up your own backup server. <laughs> is that that's a suggested in our, our comments? Is that a backup I'll, server? I, I, I what? Then you don't use. I know then you you're don't not use apps. That to the masses. But, yeah. I mean, there's there's you know, have you met the average person? Right. Because I mean, I don't trust myself to do that, and I do crazy stuff with my system. I think I think worth noting is the fact that none of us are really even sure what it is we're worried about. We're we we just understand that this all feels like poor hygiene and, uh, you know, to, to put, uh, you know, somebody else, whoever that somebody else is, whether it's a government ent entity, a corporation or whatever in charge. And, and just what we desperately want is to be told, Oh, no, no, we got it. We're taking care of it. Don't you worry. Uh, but also we're smart enough to not believe them. Right. <sighs> well, yeah, I, once, once the, once the system's there, it always, it always, it almost inevitably gets abused, and you don't know for a while. We saw that with after 9/11, we passed the Patriot Act, and we made, and now we've seen this used for political purposes. We've seen conversations and stuff leaked about politicians. You know, we saw what was being happened, listening to other other government officials in other countries and stuff. And it is, we just sort of live in this sort of idea world where you know, it was one thing, wow, we're just looking out for bad people. But then you're like things coming up in the, you know, New York times or Washington post, like the intelligence community should be embarrassed. The fact that somebody is able to report on this because somebody leaked on this or somebody said this, they should be embarrassed by how, how that wall of secrecy has been broken for political purposes. That's, and that tells you like how much more goes on there. And that's, you know, government security, you know, that we had, you know, one of the biggest intrusions, like, you know, when my brother went to go work at the FBI, I got interviewed, you know, everybody, family members get interviewed. All that data, everything that, that got leaked years ago. Oh, wow. You know, like China knows the family members of every single law enforcement agent, everybody's ever done a high level security review ever. They have all that data because the government put that in servers that weren't secure. And that's part of the problem is one is bad actors. Problem is just people who aren't stakeholders, uh, reputational stakeholders, not caring and doing a poor job of it. And so. And it's. Double tough because it's like who wants to who like like right now absent a a clear black and white situation, uh, who wants to stand up and say no? Stop <laughs> chasing the child molesters. Stop the drug <laughs> right. dealer. Well, you, you know, I, I think a number of people have been speaking up about that because they know Apple's kind of hoping for the fact that nobody wants to be like, oh, so you're on the side. And like it's like no, that's a horrible argument to make. And we can if you're if you're okay if that's your argument. We can make a lot of reasons. We can make arguments how you shouldn't allow any encryption of iCloud backups, and you should get every local law enforcement agency a key to my iMessages. Do you want that? No? Oh, you, there are killers and drug dealers and murderers in my neighborhood right now using right. iMessages. Shouldn't the government be able to know? It's like— Don't you, I do think, you have that? Oh, I'm sorry. You've got something you want to hide? Like, right. Yeah, and I, I think that it's going to—I think, thankfully, people are like, we're not going to— I, I, I believe this issue of the child abuse is real, a very, mm -hmm. very concerned problem, but it's like— I think Apple giving a billion dollars to efforts to you know combat that probably be way more effective. Yeah, you're welcome, Apple. <laughs> yeah, that's yep. a, that's a free one for you, Apple. Ding. Yeah, Apple a billion dollars fund prosecutor initiatives to help you know like <laughs> you know punish you know, a lot of things that'd be done if you really wanted to solve a problem you could help you could you could make a miserable impact. But uh, the, the reasoning they might be doing this, though, is to allow full encryption of your iCloud backups is the idea to allow you to include because right now they're not encrypted. The idea that Apple might say, OK, we're going to do this because we're going to have full encryption of your iCloud backup. But that way, the government can't use this as an excuse to say, you know, well, that's so that's an interesting question, right? Because because so, because you, your data on the iCloud servers is not uh, uh, is not fully encrypted and secure. Would this uh, if this was presented as a trade off as, hey, uh, we are going to encrypt iCloud. Once your data is on the server, we can't look at your at this or that or any, anything. But we also need to have a thing to check for child abuse material. So we will do on device scanning, and when we, you know, when we find enough hits over a threshold, we can look at only those items to review them, and not even the full things of the, you know, 
not the exact file, but a, co- a facsimile of it. Would would you would we take that trade off? Would, would would that be an acceptable trade? I don't, I don't know. Oh, yeah, I, guess I, I will, my prediction though is that if what this one researcher said that the that the fact that there were certain images that triggered that system happened, it would not surprise me if that becomes a new thing for you know gray hat security researchers is to just create a bunch of images that are not this material, but just to sort of flood the system and just show how problematic it is. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. Also, there's a, oh. Some, something where you can't tell if it's a butt or a dollar bill. If, if you or, do well, like even a, this guy says he has a photo of a guy holding money that flags the system, yeah. you know, and he says, he's, he's like, I may put the, I may show this at a conference and get everybody who takes that photo, have their system flagged. But what happens is a human reviewer then look at it. Oh, this is a guy with money in his hand. But the idea is if you overwhelm the human reviewers in the system, not saying you should do that. Right. Just saying what might happen. You know? mm. Like legit not saying do this. Yeah, <laughs> Just actually do not do it. Not jokingly. Don't. I, feel, I, feel, I feel like physically dirty. I feel like we should change topics okay. or something. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's talk about cockfighting. One- <laughs> uh how do, so uh, I, I've got go I've got a question for y'all. How do you how do you how do you set up your day? I've been using I mentioned this a few weeks ago. I've been using the Things app. They've re-updated the Things app a while ago, and I've been using that to set up my day. You can order stuff pretty easily. You can have a a, a widget, and it shows you all your stuff. Um, I've found that that's been pretty helpful of uh, because I'm very kind of a a, a serial thinker. I think kind of in order. Um, that, that helps me. What, what do y'all do in terms of oh, you wake up and you think about what your day looks like? Um, that's fascinating because like my biggest problem is trying to take on too much every single day. So instead, it's like I, I, my first thought every morning is, uh, OK, what am I tempted to drift, drift into that I really need to set aside for a different time, like uh, uh, half completed projects or discussions where it's like, you know, maybe, you know, the previous day we had gotten most of the way done and I'm tempted to follow through. So um, I guess uh, my guess is there's not an app that would solve that. Um, so I don't have an answer for you. Sorry. <laughs> no, I mean, and it doesn't have to be an app or, or, or anything just in terms of, of how you, pick and prioritize things because i because because uh i mean i i i feel you on that i i always worry about taking on too much and then having to say oh actually i couldn't do it and and kind of letting someone down um and and so i don't i don't know it's 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 something i've just been thinking about the past few weeks uh and andrew do you have do you what do you you wake up in the morning how do you think of what your day is one there's a big assumption you just made right there but we'll proceed anyways (laughs) um I use my calendar like my before I go to bed, I open up my Google calendar and I see what do I have to do? And that determines what time I'm going to wake up, like my alarm clock time. So usually it's like 30 minutes before I have to do something, I'll wake up. Hmm. Uh, so that's my first step where I go to bed at night and do that. And that it was different when I before I worked at OpenAI and I had. You know, all the time, you know, I, I was the, the only thing the only thing that was ever on my schedule was this show. So I used Google Calendar. So Google Calendar sort of, and if somebody says, oh, I want to do a thing, I'm like, send me a GCal invite, send me a Google Calendar invite, or it doesn't exist. And right. that helps mm-hmm. a lot. So I use Google Calendar to organize that. Okay. Beyond that, I'm not a, I'm, I'm only structured about one thing, which is ever, whatever thing I'm working on at that time. If it's a book, then it's like, I got my meetings and my book. Everything else can just try to fit and fall wherever it can. And I just say no to all the other things. Hmm. Uh, interesting. Yeah. I, um, I, I've, I've, I've been enjoying using the things app, um, because I can, I can say, okay, this is something I need to get to, but I don't need to set it to a day. I can say, this is, these are the things I'm doing today and I can order them in a non-committal way. Um, I can even, I'll even put like, a um, I'll, I'll put the time of like what time I'm supposed to do. So I'll, it'll be like weird things, 1230. And I'll just, I just put in there. It doesn't need to be in a calendar. Cause that's, that's the thing I don't like with the calendars, Google G calendar or iCal. Like it's every time you want to do something, you've got to 
have a start point and an end point, and you've got to use their uh, really not great UIs on any of them really to add something. And then if you change something, move something around, something comes up, then you're moving stuff around where uh, it feels a little non-committal. I can say today, these are the things I'm going to do. This, I'm going to move this to tomorrow. This has a deadline for this day, and I'll keep an eye on that. Um, you know, uh, my organizational style is often uh, it is one where I have to where I I trust my past self. I say, okay, uh, you were good when some when something came up. You put it on your thing, and it will show up when it's your time to do I, that. And I, and I, and you ha and so for me, I have to make it easy to make sure that that Bryce, the past Bryce had a very easy way to do that. I just imagine like a video, Bryce, this is me in the past. <laughs> this is the thing I need for future. No, no, the yeah. past. You recorded this. You probably forgot, but you totally recorded this. Yeah. Go yeah. buy milk. Prove, <laughs> prove, prove that you're me. What number am I thinking of? Well, Bryce, I'm in the past. I can't tell you, <laughs> but right now I'm thinking of seven. Okay, I was thinking eight, close enough. Okay. <laughs> I knew you were gonna guess the number anyway. <laughs> That is shockingly close to what I've had to start doing as we have decided to be more intentional with the stuff that we present on Great Night. Like uh, I'll, I'll have something happen on a Thursday or whatever that I know will make a good story. Mm -hmm. So I'll say, I'll say like, uh, you know, hey, uh, uh, robot, remind me Tuesday morning at 11.34 a.m. to talk about blankety blank. And, uh, I'll, and, and, it'll, and then it goes away. It doesn't it come go, up until Tuesday. I don't think about it. And then on Tuesday, I'm like, oh, yeah, that was funny. <laughs> and, then, and then I'm all set, you know, for, for yeah, it's, it's yeah. wild. Um, I, you know, one of the things that have been played around with AI is the idea of creating like the, the AI version of yourself, the virtual agents, it's that. And I can just see like the Brian thing. Hey, Brian, you got to do this. Hey, man, I know I got to do this. No, Brian, you created me to tell you that I got to do this thing. No, you're the virtual me. I know, but I'm kind of the purest form of you, Brian, if you think about it. And then uh, the argument continues. That would also make sense where it's like a virtual Brian would be able to say like, hey, uh, judging from the last 46 years, seems like what you'll tend to do is blankety, blankety, blank. So how about we not do that? You know, how about we do this, uh, which tends to lead to success? Oh my gosh. And then real Brian's like, oh, your battery's running down. So yeah. sorry. <laughs> no, Brian, you can't, you can't do that, bro. That's not cool, bro. <laughs> we're like, hi, it's me 2.0. We knew you were going to, we were talking oh. about it, how this is your favorite trick to get rid of me. Do you have you have you experienced the ghost echo effect, by the way? Like I use like I have several Amazon echoes. Oh, and not yet. Like, what yeah, is and I'll be like, effect? hey, hey, like, hey, like, so what time is it? And I'll hear the time is 222. Where where's my other echo? Where is it? And and I found I had to search my place and I found that I had a uh, one of the fire tablets. It still, I hadn't plugged in for like a month, but still had a power in it, and it was hearing and everything I said, but I couldn't tell where it was. Wow. And like that's my favorite fear, fear of like the Internet of Things is the future where it's going to be these small, you know, little coin sized things that are going to be this like, oh, I'm happy to help you. Where are you? I don't have location turned on. Please, you know, update my BIOS, and I'll I'm like, yeah, oh, no, I so, have I have that too. I have um Apple devices in my apartment and. I'll say a thing and I hope that, you know, uh, the HomePod is usually pretty good, but sometimes if my phone hears it or if my watch hears it, there's some things that those things don't do right. Or like on, the, I got a, I got that lap, the, that MacBook the other day. Uh, when you tell, when you tell the MacBook to set a timer, it, do you know what it does? Uh, instead of um, setting a timer, cause it doesn't have a clock app, it sets a reminder that far away from you. And it's just called timer. <laughs> And it's like, at least you did something, but that's a thing where, okay, well, I, I need it to be on the right device that will work with the, with the thing. It's, um, yeah, I found myself, uh, uh, telling my device to do two things, set an alarm for a certain time. And then one minute after that, set a reminder for a thing. So then that way in the future, the alarm goes off and it's like, why the hell is this alarm happening? And then one minute later it says, Doodle. don't forget about the so-and-so. Oh, that must've been why I did the uh, thing. Yeah, I I do that. I am. I think I'm very much alarm clock for like if I have meetings coming up, whatever. Totally set those, but not. I don't just wait for the calendar notifications. Mm -hmm. Like if I have to go to the airport, I have my I set up alarm for when I need to wake up. I set an alarm for when I need to really be heading for that door. An alarm for when I got to be leaving. And yeah. 
Uh, you know, I, I, I am kind of with the, the new, like the new iOS 15, they're going to make all the Siri stuff on device, which I'm very excited about. There's, there, there are so many times where, uh, uh, laundry, laundry is the big thing where this always happens for me. The laundry room that I use has terrible service. I don't know what, if it's made out of a Faraday cage or whatever, but if I go in there, if I set the dryer and I try to say, uh, Hey, Hey dingus, 62 minute timer. And it, it'll say one moment. Hmm. Still thinking about it. Oh my God. That's oh, I'm sorry. It, I couldn't do anything. It's like a number of times that, that, that she ever figures it out where it's like mm -hmm. one moment, Never gonna Hold happen. on. You know you're screwed. And it's like, okay, you're going to say it seven more times than eventually say, I didn't get that. Or uh, the the thing I happened lately, because I'll use AirPods because I am going to a laundry room, so I want to hear music. Um, I know that I don't I don't want to be the guy who's doing Hey Siri, <clears throat> Hey Dingus to uh, out, out loud. So I will take my phone, hold the power button to get Dingus to listen to me and say, but uh, 62 minute timer. And I'll, I'll hit the button. Hey, Dingus, 60, doo -doo, two minute timer, two minute timer coming right up. Ugh. No. Doo -doo, 62 minute timer. You already have a two minute timer. Would you like to replace? <laughs> and so all of that stuff, it just, they're cool. There's so, utility. They're, I, like, I think people will find ways to use things like voice assistants, but they, they these are like real quality. Well, right now things. there's a lot of silly workarounds. Like for example, you know, I'll say like, you know, wake me in blank number of minutes and it'll say, um, uh, your, your two, uh, your two hour 48 PM, uh, alarm is now activated and you go look through your alarms and it's you just have a this, million of them right because you can't just clear it. a new one every time you say anything yeah. right yeah. yeah i i i think part of the problem is this is that i think apple i'm a big apple fanboy, but i had thought that oh, a couple years ago i'm like oh apple will have on device voice recognition before google does because apple's very much on device google has on device voice recognition for many tasks now because google has poured billions and billions into machine learning. Apple's invested in machine learning, but not like Google is. Google has Tensor, you know, does TensorFlow, does all these other things for it. And a lot of the problems I encounter with Siri, I'm like, I can train a model on my desktop that's better at intent recognition than Siri is for many things. And that's what's frustrating. And then that they're now pushing, and I think part of the problem with, with, but I will build it on top of like, I'll take a Google, Google have a pre-trained model called like a BERT model. Google is Mr. Data or Mrs. Data. Google has tons of data to be able to train on top of stuff. Apple has data, but they don't have data like Google does. And so if you have Google amount of data to train on, you can create much better models to do this with. So it is frustrating because where, where I mean, there's besides my work where I know where the real state of the art is, even in the stuff that should be, should be much better yeah and the google level of data is i don't know a bit scary at times like um that's uh, capital b big data yeah like I, I i've been feeling under the weather and it was like um uh, enough that uh uh just basically lethargy or whatever and i felt the need to it's like ah, i probably should get a covid test just to make sure for to be responsible because last time i did it turned out i was positive and it was a good thing so uh uh i did a search for like covid test something 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 uh and then it just it gave me a, a result that wasn't good and then i just typed in the words near me and it auto completed get it you're looking for covid tests that are near you here's what's near you and it gave me an answer uh, uh which good question mark but also creepy yeah you know like it's there's a reason you know location data there's a reason they want to do it so that they can find you a local covid test but also how much location data when yeah. how specific of location which i like uh you know the iphone they'll do uh uh what, what is it like location kind of blurring they'll say like yeah, they're in this circle that's good enough for you um but but then but then you kind of get into the facebook privacy settings problem of like you should have a lot of control over your over your data and also you should you should have a lot of options but you ha shouldn't have so many that it's overwhelming or incomprehensible or even now the new thing with the facebook privacy data is that they split all of those privacy settings up into a million different menus for the specific 
uh, functions. And that's also like not great either. So, so I don't know. You have to find a, if you're, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's, it's a mess. <laughs> what are your picks? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got a pick. Uh, I, I mentioned it before, but uh, you know what? The Things app is pretty good. Uh, I, I really dig it. It's like $10 on the phone. It's like $50 on on uh, the Mac OS app store um, for that version of it. Uh, but I, I think it's really cool. I've really enjoyed using it. I don't use all of the the vacation, the, the planning stuff. I don't use a lot of that uh, very specific stuff. There are tags that I don't use. But in terms of like having a good um, intuitive sort of design and where you can drag stuff or swipe stuff in, in, in certain ways to do different things. Um, I, I think it feels, it feels very good. And that's the thing that I need is I need it to feel good when I'm using it so that I don't feel like, okay, then this is a hurdle between me and putting this information down. I click the thing, I tap, I go away. And, um, that is the, that's, uh, the, that's what I need out of it more than tags and stuff. Uh, but very highly recommend yet again the Things app. Uh, I recommend uh, uh, continuing to read Brandon Sanderson's. <laughs> uh, uh, I forget the name of the series, but uh, all I know is like I got to a point where enough people have read this that all I did was tweet out the words without context. Uh, Bridge four. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, uh, hot dozens of people responded to it. Uh, it's hmm. not the Mistborn series. Let me, oh, it's not Mistborn. No, Interesting. that was the one that, that started me, uh, uh, uh the Stormlight Archive. That's, ah. yeah. So I'm almost done with, uh, book two. Who oh boy, long books. They're very long books. Yeah. But they sound like they're good. Yep. Nope. Having a great time. Bonnie's getting caught up. Uh, not exactly thrilled with the fact that, uh, our, Amazon devices are constantly wanting to shift us, you know, to where each other is on that. So, but outside of that, oh. great. Nice. So it's kind of a, I want to do a follow-up review. Um, I've had this iPad Pro for well, maybe a month or so. And I was hesitant at first, like, did I want to get it? I also went and got the the pen, you know, the, the pencil for mm -hmm. it. And I love this. I've had I've had like every every just about every version of iPad there's ever been, and I was hesitant to get this because I had I had a, I have the big iPad Pro which I never used, and then I decided ah, let me get this because my smaller one for my day to day you know it's getting a little bit older, and I said let me try this, and I'm like eh, I'll get the pencil like I had another I had the the Logitech crayon which I, I thought was a good cheap alternative but then I got this with this pencil here. I use this all the time because a lot of times when I make notes, I got to do sketches and stuff. And there's a sketch there, I promise you. <laughs> um, ah, watch as it appears. Uh, but anyhow, um, what's beautiful, the pencil, when you connect it to the side there, it just starts charging. Mm -hmm. So you never have to plug the pencil in anything. It just does inductive charging on there, which is fantastic. Um, the screen's beautiful, all of that. But just just for if you find yourself often having to write or draw and make notes and stuff, this plus the pencil, I mean, the iPad Pro with this has just been wonderful, amazing. Nice. I, so, I, I've, I've, I've always had a little bit of an interest in the the pencil, but the I, I never have the 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 nice enough iPad to use the the second generation pencil where it just clicks mm -hmm. on the side. Um, and I don't I don't carry my iPad around enough to to write on it. But uh, they seem but, like a cool little a cool device. Yeah, I mean, I work from home, so I guess I was like, I had like I had to go run out the other day, and I'm like, ah, oh, you know, if, if I ever thought about it, like maybe I would have brought it with me, but uh, it's just, yeah, I, so I sit five feet away from the microphone here and sort of incline. Um, I wasn't sure, I was hesitant because I'm like, ah, it's just another toy. Am I going to do this? Use it? But then, really, really, really dug it. It just everything works great, just sort of the way you want it to work. So nice, cool. Gentlemen, it's been great, just the three of us, and it's after. <laughs> <laughs> There's that moment where it's like, oh, man, he could hold us for a very long time right here. <laughs> the bell does not release you, I release you. <laughs> no, sir, oh, my God, I forgot about that. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much. I for released me. <laughs> that didn't go over well. That didn't really go over well. 
Thank you everybody for joining us for the things. We will be back for Cord Killers in about two and a half hours. Special guest Bill Meeks will also talk about the Suicide Squad movie during Cord Killers. So check us out yeah. then. And make sure you follow Andrew Remember, what was, what was the Twitch account? Twitch.tv slash? Twitch.tv slash OpenAI. Open AI. Yeah. Open AI. Okay. Tomorrow, yep. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Stoked. Stoked. Very cool. All right, everybody. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.